Back on the show is Anthony Burchak, who's got a huge fight coming up here for Ryzen. He's going to be taking on Tatsuya Kawajiri. He's moving up to featherweight for this one, uh, coming up here on April 16th. Burchak, what's going on? How are you? What is going on, James Lynch? I haven't talked to you in forever, my man. I know. It's been a very long time. I was actually trying to remember the last time I interviewed you. And actually, I got a kind of a funny story. So after your last win in the UFC, um, I was all excited because uh, you won the fight. And uh, I was actually at the event. And, uh, I was, you know, usually they bring the fighters back and they do interviews. But then uh, you, for some reason, I don't know if you had to go to the hospital or what the deal was. Uh, you didn't do a post-fight interview after UFC Fight Night 90. So it's kind of bummed out. So uh, I'm glad we're here uh, connecting now. But uh, let's talk about that. That was a last time you were in the UFC um what's happened since then I think a lot of people it kind of flew under the radar that you left the UFC and now you've signed with Ryzen yeah so um after that fight I I did end up going to the hospital um he went to the hospital with uh, some chest issues and then uh I went to the hospital with that that thumb injury that I had like in the first 30 seconds of the fight where my bone came through the thumb um but since then you know I just uh I thought the UFC was going to resign me um they said, hey, hang tight. You know, we got a couple more fights to get out this year in 2016. We'll resign you as soon as we get into 2017. Um, well, Thanksgiving came, and, and uh, actually Aljamain Sterling ended up getting sick. And I said that I would I would take on Rafael Asuncao on like 10 days' notice. So I sacrificed my Thanksgiving. I didn't eat. You know, my holiday season, uh, everything just kind of, kind of came to a screeching halt because I was like, hey, man, I'm really pushing for this fight. And, uh, you know, I was in, in back and forth with Sean Shelby saying, hey, you know, this, um, you know, I'm down to down to save a card or save a fight for you. You know, what's let's make this a Sun South fight happen. He goes, hey, that's a really tough fight to come back to. And I said, look, man, it's it, right now, the 135 pound division, there's no easy fights, you know, and, and there's there's no easy fights in the UFC period. So I said, if this gets me my my contract back and, uh, you know, the money's right, you know, I, I'll, I'm, I'm down to take this, you know, on short notice. And he goes, okay, let me, uh, you know, let me make it work and, and I'll get back to you. I said, okay, let me know right now because I'm going for a run uh, if you call me back and, and I don't answer. So sure enough, he called me back while I was on my run. I called him back, did, didn't answer, called him back again, went straight to voicemail, and then I get a text message saying, hey, it's complicated, but we can't have you fight in New York. So uh, I was just kind of at a loss there. You know, I didn't really understand what was going on. And then I saw Rob Font didn't have a fight. And they ended up putting in my buddy Matt Schnell real quick. So, you know, I was just trying to jump on whatever I could to, to re-sign. And he goes, hey, let's just let's just hold tight for 2017. And, you know, I'll make, sh- make sure I get you back on the roster. Well, I told him, look, man, I got four kids to feed. I don't got time to be waiting around. Like, I'm 30. I'm going to be 31 in May. Like, I'm not getting any younger. So uh, I ended up feeling, fielding some offers. And Combates Americas was the first one that, that came out of the gate with a really, really strong offer. And uh, I had a matchup. I had a fight. Everything was lined up for uh, January 19th in Mexico City. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, I just noticed on my road runs uh, that finding the motivation for anything outside the UFC was very, very difficult. And, you know, any fight outside, you know, it's 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 a fight. You can get hurt. So I just noticed that um, my, my, my desire wasn't there. Like the, the flame was burning, but it wasn't raging, you know. So... I took a couple of steps back and told Mercedes that, you know, we need to relook at our options. Um, and at that point, uh, ACB came back with a big offer and Ryzen came back with an offer. So it was like everybody came in all at once. And, and I think it was almost like they didn't believe that my free agency was real. And uh, as soon as they saw that I was 100 percent free and clear free agent, then the offers came rolling in. And I was really, really excited about it. Um and, and, you know, we made it happen. I told them that, you know, I'd fight in Ryzen at 135 or 61 kilos. And they said, well, you know, what about 45s? And I said, well, I said, look, if the money's right and the opponent's right, absolutely. And they said, Tatsuya Kawajiri. I said, absolutely, 100%. You know, he's a, he's a legend. He's an icon. Um, I got tons of film on him. You know, there's tons of stuff that I could do to, uh, to do tape and film on. And, um, you know, I talked to all my coaches about it. You know, I talked to Cub. I talked to a couple of my training partners. And they were like, dude, that's a, that's a scrap for sure, you know what I mean? But it's one that will definitely propel your name into, you know, the high ranks at 145 or 135, doesn't matter, you know. So that's where I'm at now, man, is I've just been grinding, getting on, on this, uh, you know, this bout for, for Kawajiri. 
Yeah, it, it's a great fight. I actually just noticed it when I was on Tapology, and I saw. I was like, I almost thought it was a mistake. I was like, Burchak's fighting at forty-five. This is crazy. Um, you know, when you found out the news once the contract had been signed, you know, how excited were you? Especially because you haven't fought in Japan before. It's like a fighter's dream to be able to go do that. Yeah, that man. This is the the cradle of MMA, right? So, you no, know, the cradle of martial arts, jujitsu, judo, aikido. All of this is coming out of of you know this area. So for a fighter to reach back and get to, you know, get to the homeland of mixed martial arts. The, the, these are the old owners of pride. You know what I mean? I'm fighting pride rules, soccer kicks, knees. Um, one amendment that I did make sure they added was that I wanted elbows. Uh, that's a big part of my game, you know, and I noticed that uh, Kawajiri lost to Melendez via TKO elbows. I noticed that he, he, you know, he's just very open to them. And I told him, I said, look, if I take this fight at 145, um, and it's not going to be, you know, unified mixed martial arts rules, three fives. And I have to have a 10 minute bout. I said, I want elbows. So they said, yeah, we'll make it happen. So, you know, just thinking about the bout, man, you know, he's ranked, I think top 100 greatest fighters of all time. That's not just right now. That's of all time. So for me to go out and make a statement, you know, I'm, I'm two and one at 145s, and, uh, I feel confident, you know, I know he's a, he's an older gentleman. He's 38. And uh, he's on a three-fight skid. He just lost to Cron Gracie uh, in, during new, their New Year's event. Um, and, you know, Cron boxed him up. Yeah, it was not only the, just a jiu-jitsu seminar, but he, he actually gave him some really good, you know, combinations on the hands. And I think uh, that's where I'm really going to shine is, is stopping the takedown, you know, boxing him up and hitting him with some strong Muay Thai and, uh, and really just defending, you know, the takedowns and jiu-jitsu. And uh, I know he's taken down one of the – one of the biggest, scariest stats that he has is that he's taken down every single one of his UFC opponents. You know, and that's there's something to be said from that. So I've really, really just been working with the greatest wrestlers that, that U.S. has to offer. Um, I just got done training with, with Aaron Pico and Cub and, and Arnold Toletta. You know, so we got some great rounds in this last Saturday. Um, I got my own guys here. You know, I'm training with 185ers here that, you know, have great blast doubles. And, you know, I'm going... You know, I'm stuffing three out of five takedowns on these monsters, you know. So this is something that, that gives me great confidence. And, and I really think that, uh, you know, a lot of people know that I'm down to bang and, and, and I have good Muay Thai and striking. But my, my roots are MMA. Uh, my, I'm sorry, wrestling. And uh, I'm a complete mixed martial artist. Excellent. Um, as far as training camp, are you going to do a bit of cross training? Or are you going to stay sort of at home base and, you know, kind of trying to do most of your training camp there as far as, you know, bodies and everything else? No, I need to leave. I mean, I don't have the level of Kawajiri here in Tucson, you know. Uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely I got good wrestlers, but I just, the MMA level, I got to go to extreme. I'm leaving this Friday. You know, I'll have uh, partners like Gray Maynard and, and uh, you know, Gustavo Lopez, who's a 35er, but he, I mean, the, the takedowns and stuff that they have there at extreme, good, strong wrestlers there, good, strong mixed martial artists. I think that's going to be definitely... Um, a place where I'm going to peak for this camp. Um, and right as of right now, Dennis Davis uh, is going to go with me to Japan. So um, that's who I got cornering me right now. My, my coach, head coach Casey Halstead, uh, committed to Ashley Evan Smith first. So I told him and I begged him. I was like, dude, please. I was like, you know, this is this is an icon fight. You know, it's um, it's definitely, you know, a high profile fight. Like, I really need you to be there. And he's like, dude, stud. I'm so sorry. I already committed to Ashley April 15th in Kansas City. So he, he's like, you know, I'll work with you and I'll get you ready. He's like, but I can't go. So that's the only thing that's kind of a bummer. But I definitely have a, a big support system. You know, my wife, Mercedes White, knows me in and out. Um, she may she may end up stepping up and taking the other corner and spot. But right now, um, I think I'm going to try to piece together Dennis Davis and uh, Ray Seffo. So that'd be a great uh, combination for me to have uh, at Ryzen. Excellent. How long are you going to spend out in, in Vegas at Extreme Couture? Um, so this Friday is the 17th, correct? And then I'll be out there till the 8th, and then I leave to Japan. Oh, cool. Okay, so nice. Just about three or four weeks. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's good. Um, now, as far as the weight cut goes, because this is at 45, do you have to sort of change your approach at all as far as you know cutting down? Or is it, I, I guess it must be a little bit easier because you don't have to cut as much weight. I, I mean, I, I compete pro jiu-jitsu at 145. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, so I just had a, a match at Fight to Win Pro, and it was a little different, you know, but um, my strength training has, has definitely increased, and, uh, 
And with that, obviously more calories burned. So I just get to eat nonstop now. I love this diet. The other night I was sitting on my couch and I was like shoving a pizza in my ma- in my mouth. And I was just like, man, I really love this diet. Like 45s is the shit. <laughs> Good stuff, man. That's awesome. So, uh- but, uh, you know, other than that, I'm just uh, – I feel a lot more energy and a lot more, I think the output there is exactly what I need against somebody like Kawajiri. For sure. Especially, especially in that, in that round one, first 10 minute round, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just to be clear too, this is just one fight you're planning on doing at featherweight. You want to compete at bantamweight. That's sort of where your home is at this point. No, absolutely. Yeah. I just, uh, like I said, if the opponent was right, the money was right for, for 145, I would do it. Um, If it was a no name guy at 145, I probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have taken it, but this is a win-win for me. You know what I mean? I'm going to be the best version of me and win, lose, or draw against Tatsuya Kawajiri. I fought one of the best of all time, and when I beat him, uh, that in turn makes me one of the best of all time. Yeah, I agree. Huge, huge name. Actually, one of my favorite fights of all time that doesn't get talked about enough is Kawajiri and Eddie Alvarez in Dream. That was like... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You that, know, and, and, and that's something that I look at is like, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to stuff like this, uh, ethnicity, but if you look at the guys that Kawajiri's losing to, he's losing to Latin fighters. That's true. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. He loses to like Brazilians and Mexicans and these tough, aggressive guys that that keep the pressure on and really just have a lot of heart and don't stop. You know what I mean? So uh, when I study film and tape and I look at Sherdog, I look at who he's beat, who he's lost to, and he loses to really gritty, tough Mexican fighters. And I think I'm a really gritty, tough Mexican fighter. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Um, before I let you go here, man, uh, I ask all the fighters this just because I'm, uh, you know, kind of curious. Um, are you a Netflix guy? Do you watch Netflix at all? I, I do. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm big on like Cosmos and stuff like that. And, oh, like, cool. The, okay. Sci-fi stuff, Ancient Aliens. Like I Netflix Ancient Aliens all the time. Okay, good stuff. So that that's if so if I log on your account right now under continue watching, it would have like all the space stuff, I guess, it, right? I would just have all kinds of space stuff and, and Avengers. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff, man. Well, uh, you got to get back to your, uh, you know, you got a birthday party to go to, so I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, where can people find you on social media? And if you got any uh, thank you, shout outs, and hey, are you doing any more of those t-shirts? Because you always do a really good job with those. Yeah, I got a, I got a really dope t-shirt coming out for this one. Um, the design is still coming out right now. It's going to be one of the best ones yet. Um, I just think that the, uh, that dichotomy of old Japan versus new Japan, you know what I mean? Like the temples versus like their new technological cities like i think that that split is really really cool and i'm trying to incorporate uh you know a front and back t-shirt of the new versus the old and i think uh it couldn't be more well said than than uh out with the old in with the new you know tatsuya is a, a legend in the sport um but it's his time to go and it's my time to step in and really establish myself as one of the most dominant fighters in the world somehow somehow that t-shirt's gonna they're gonna come about but um yeah, guys, follow me at a Burchak MMA. That's a b i r c h a k M M A on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Anthony Burchak. I'm super engaging with my fans all the time. I retweet, reply all the time. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. Thank you so much for all the support leading up to this fight. Uh, I definitely feel all the positive vibes and energy, and I can't say thank you enough, guys.